Hey, Michael, good to see you. Do you feel like some of your uh, regulars felt a sense of urgency down the stretch to, to seal this win, clinch home court advantage, and potentially give you guys a chance to rest some of those guys if indeed you choose that over the next three games? Um, I guess my first question to you was, uh, did I miss your free game? Were you there? Let's see. I wasn't. I was on a flight. I was actually in an Uber trying my best to connect. Failed miserably. Yeah, we're a no excuse team, Mike, so I don't want to hear that bullshit. Um, yeah, I, I felt there was a sense of urgency, you know, uh, after losing at Utah, losing at home to Brooklyn. Um, granted, those are two really good teams, but uh, we wanted to find a way to not only clinch, but get back to feeling good about how we're playing. Uh, and that was my challenge pregame and also at halftime. We got off to a great start tonight, and I thought that first half, end of the first was an 8-0 run for Charlotte. Then they opened the second on nine to four runs, so seventeen to four, and I didn't think our bench unit played well enough. Um, and the challenge was, we can't pick our spots. I don't have a magic wand for game one where we're just going to play better. You know, we got to start you know, bringing it ourselves. And uh, and it was great to see us. You know, that team battle. They're they're fighting for playing position to stay out of that nine ten game. So we knew we'd get a great fight, but uh, you know we made enough plays down the stretch to pull up the win and to secure home court advantage in the first round. Michael Spencer. Hey, Michael, Mike kind of alluded to it there. Now that you guys do have a home court advantage for the first round of the playoffs, will you consider resting guys moving forward for the regular season? Yes, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep all things uh, under consideration, no doubt. Um, as I was walking off the court tonight, Tim Conley grabbed me. Uh, and he said, you know what's crazy is that the last three years in a very deep and loaded Western Conference, we're the only team to have gained home court advantage in all three of the last playoffs. So uh, I just think that's a tremendous accomplishment, uh, and our players and our coaches and our trainers and everybody deserves so much credit because that's not easy to do. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll look at these last three games. We have a back-to-back -back coming up. Try to really uh, limit – Guys playing, maybe sitting them out a game or two, and also maybe just you know really taking their minutes down to a much uh, much better number. The last thing we want is anybody to get hurt going into the postseason. Brandon Cristal. Yeah, Coach. I guess kind of two questions. One related to players specifically. Someone like Nicola. Will you ask him or talk to him about whether you're sitting him, or will you make the decision without involving him, and then? I guess how nice, whether it's a team tonight or the next couple before you get to Portland, to have teams that aren't, you know, at the top of their divisions battling for playoff spots to kind of, uh, you know, allow other guys to play and maybe ease off the, the guys who've been playing big minutes. Yeah, uh, to your first question, Brandon, you know, uh, Nicole and I have been together for six years. Uh, we have a tremendous relationship, coach, player, friend, whatever you want to call it. So we've been having an ongoing discussion about that very subject, about potentially reducing minutes, potentially sitting out games. Uh, and that's something that we'll continue to look at. Uh, on one hand, I truly respect the hell out of Nicola. We have this immense amount of pride that he wants to play every night. Um, but we also have to be smart, uh, not only for Nicola, but for our team. We have already sustained enough injuries. We don't need the MVP, the clear cut MVP, to, to have any injuries going into the postseason. Uh, and to the other point, yeah, I mean, as we play these next three games, it's an opportunity for, for other guys to play. You know, uh, the silver lining in the Brooklyn loss is Marcus Howard. Uh, he got a chance to play in the second half. It was great having Monte Morris available. We just wanted to limit him to first half minutes tonight, Monte. But uh, other guys will get a chance to play. And uh, any game minutes some of these guys get, they're invaluable. Vinny Benedetto. Hey, Michael, you guys really got out and ran in that first quarter, and I think that was kind of part of building that big lead. What what uh, what allowed you guys to get out and get all those fast break points? Yeah, I, I think, you know, getting stops early, uh, rebounding. Uh, obviously, tonight we did a poor job on the glass. We did a poor job taking care of the ball. Uh, I thought a three-point defense was phenomenal against a really good three-point shooting team, especially coming after the Utah-Brooklyn game where we really struggled in that area. But – uh, we are at our best when we defend, we rebound, and we run. And you look to attack, score before they can uh, 
implement their game plan, they can get their matchups, whatever it may be. Uh, and the challenge is not to just do it early. You know, great running teams run for, for 48 minutes, and you got to be in great shape to do that. Um, but uh, that, that is definitely when we're at our best. We can get out and run and score some easy baskets before the defense is back. Esteban Abed. Hi, coach. Congrats for the win. Um, the 14 turnovers in the second half uh, complicate the way to close the game to you, to, to Denver now. But st still that, uh, how important is this victory to start a road trip uh, for Denver? Uh, really important. You know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Esteban, having lost two games in a row, you know, you don't want to get to the habit of losing three, four games in a row. I did not want to go into the postseason on a losing streak. You know, you have to find ways to win, even when guys are out. To your point, obviously, the turnovers weren't great tonight, 18 for 24 points, and a lot of those coming into second half. Uh, the game became a lot more interesting than it should have. Obviously, uh, uh, the, the kid, Devontae Graham, off the bench was spectacular, especially late. You got to limit those threes. But uh, I'd much rather clean those things up after a win than after a third straight loss. So uh, we got three games to go on this road trip, and uh, I'm excited for our guys in that locker room. This has been a really long year. Uh, let, let's call it what it is. Very long year for all of our players coming after the bubble. Uncertainty of a really short offseason, mentally and physically draining. And to be able to accomplish home court advantage with all the injuries that we've had is just a testament to the character of that group. Uh, and that's why I love coaching them so much. All right, coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Nicole from Tab Deportes. Hi, coach. Congress for the win. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. Michael Porter Jr. had a big night tonight in offense. So how do you feel about his improving season by season? Yeah, obviously, um, if you look at Michael's very young and short NBA career, uh, it's just been one of growth and continued improvement. Uh, he misses a whole first year because of his back, rehabbing, getting stronger, getting healthy. Uh, his rookie year, he plays well. Uh, you go to the bubble last year, I thought he was fantastic. With the injuries to Gary Harris and Will Barton, became a starter and showcased what he can do. And then this season, you know, people forget he missed a lot of time in January due to the COVID protocols, but uh, he's been outstanding. If you look at the stats since I think Jamal Murray went down, you know, Nicole has played at a high level all year long, but when Jamal went down, I mean, Michael Porter is just taking his game to another level. And I think in the first half, he had 23 points, got us off to a really quick start, uh, six boards. Um, so he's, uh, he's growing, he's improving, and I know that he's got so much more room to grow and develop. And that's probably the most exciting thing about our team. We have a lot of young stars in this league, and the future is very bright. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.